Hello my friends and welcome to another ESO guide. Today we'll be looking at Vetrum Hellra Citadel. I'll be walking you through the trial and pointing out key things that I think you need to know. Hellra is a 12 man trial that exists in the west area of Craglon. It's pretty fun and uh, I've been running it just recently uh, for this set. Just to point out, the item set is actually called Advancing Yokuda. Uh, on the individual items, but the set itself is called Berserking Warrior. And the reason why I've been looking to gain all pieces of this uh, fairly old set is because in update 27 I had a buff which has made it a pretty strong crit set to run again. And here you can see the other sets that dropped within the trial. Uh, many of them still used uh, quite widely throughout the game in many different builds out there, but we're here for the Berserking Warrior. So let's get it. Whilst I run through my build in the background, I'm just going to talk a little bit about why I felt like I wanted to put this together. Um, I should note just very quickly before I do so, uh, that you can find links to the various different boss battles and stages in the comments section below. I've been running Vet Hellra really quite a lot of times just recently. It's taken me quite a few times for the specific items to drop, uh, specifically the dagger I found quite a difficult one to acquire. And throughout running it with various different groups, I did notice that there's still a lot of people that are quite unaware of even some of the most basic mechanics within the uh, trial itself. Now this is not necessarily that surprising if you consider the amount of people that have joined the game uh, you know, since that trial actually came out. So to me it sounded like a good idea to put together this kind of basic guide with just like really easy to understand hints and tips and pointers uh, throughout the trial. Without a doubt, if you watch this guide all the way through before going in uh, to Vet Hellra, um, you're going to be equipped with the information that you need. And trust me, everybody in a trial really appreciates when people understand the mechanics and just generally what to do and where to be uh, throughout the trial. Of course, the best way to learn what to do in a trial is really just to get in there and you know start having a go. Uh, and you know this is a really good trial uh, to cut your teeth on. It's probably the easiest trial within ESO. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's easy uh, on veteran mode, um, but it's definitely a, a good one uh, if you're a beginner uh, coming to trials. So before you enter the instance, uh, make sure that you start the quest. That's a repeatable quest that you can do every time you come into the trial. If you don't remember to pick it up, you can actually uh, pick it up and complete it uh, at the end of the trial. You can see a breakdown of the various bosses within the trial. None of them for me really presenting a, a massive challenge. This obviously varies depending on the group uh, that you're with, but overall they're actually very doable. The other thing I wanted to note here is that the team splits halfway through and ends up facing different bosses. So upon entering the instance, make your way down to the middle of the bridge. You can mount. Um, don't go any further than that because if you do, you'll end up actually starting the uh, trial and the ad wave will begin. When the group is ready to go, you want to move together to this location, which is sort of finding yourself just above a uh, pair of steps. All along the while, you'll have ads, loads of ads, uh, spawning in and around you all the way up. And what I tend to do here is drop a bunch of AoEs, including putting uh, major fracture on all of the enemies as they're coming up the hill. Honestly, if you're a first timer, I would just stick with the group and uh, gather on top of the hill and wait for the ads to come up. Now, usually, um, the group would only wait for those ads to come up the staircase and leave the other ads that have just been pulled in there uh, from the right uh, to sort of like kill in a second wave. However, this group felt like that they were uh, strong enough and we had the heals and the DPS to be able to essentially just nuke everything in entirely the same spot uh, with a bunch of AoEs and, um, and just generally nuking them down. Now, if you're a first timer, uh, um, probably don't be pulling anything, you know, literally stay with the group and allow uh, either the tank or some of the more experienced members to uh, pull the ad waves uh, when the group is ready. Um, it's really good within these kind of trials to be on, you know, mic if you can, uh, or at least to be listening in on the conversations that are happening. On Xbox those conversations can happen uh, just in the regular group chat and game, or, you know, they can happen in party chat as well. Uh, a lot of the time what will happen is you'll just be invited to a party if you're invited to a trial. So keep an eye out for that invitation and definitely take people up on that, you know, should you be invited to it, because uh, it's really key to communicate with the rest of the team and manage uh, tactics and 
uh, organize yourselves essentially, uh, it's a huge benefit to be able to communicate that way, especially if you're new to the trial. So as you can see here, we're just staying very bunched up, very grouped, uh, which is allowing the healer to uh, keep sort of like a you know a radial kind of heal on all of us, and uh, we're just staying nice and tight, and just kind of focusing our DPS on uh, chunks of those ads as we go. Um, as you go through the, the the battle, you will have more ad waves spawn, uh, so you have to just keep an eye out for that, and basically wherever they spawn, uh, just try and move as a group of, uh, of DDs and swarm on top of them. After those ad waves have been cleaned up and you approach the door, you'll have five flame shapers uh, spawn. These are relatively easy to defeat, but the one thing you need to watch out for is that attack uh, which uh, was just triggered there that you can see in front of you. Uh, it's sort of a flame attack, uh, similar to the King Golds in uh, Maelstrom Marina, if you're familiar with that. Uh, all you need to do, really, is as soon as you see one of them uh, going off, you know, lifting their staff up in the air and the fire effect starting, um, you need to just uh, butt them, basically. You need to just interrupt them and uh, make sure that that is taken down as quickly as possible. If a number of them, two or three of them, do have their staffs up in the air doing that amount of damage, the team will start to wipe their... Uh, they do a significant amount of damage, and they also appear throughout the instant, so it's something to keep an eye out for. So we finally come to the first boss, and a very common tactic will be that the tank will essentially taunt the boss and take him off to the left side, and then the other tank, the off tank, will uh, taunt the NPC ads that come in uh, and sort of like taunt them out the way of the, the rest of the fight. Um, sometimes the off tank will just keep those ads just slightly inside the fight so that the AoEs that are being generated by the DDs will uh, you know, start to wear them down and take them out over time. Honestly, they don't do a huge amount of damage or any attacks you need to worry about. Uh, the main thing that you need to focus on within this fight is uh, you need to watch your feet because there is an AoE uh, that will randomly appear below you and it will, it will track you and follow you. Uh, so you need to make sure that you, you're trying your best to not stand in that uh, if possible. Also, uh, when that AoE is not below your feet, you need to make sure that you are uh, with the group, that you're sort of like fairly tight, uh, uh, so that the healer can uh, get heals on you and heal you through the various attacks that Rock or 2 does. Um, some of the attacks are fairly nasty. Uh, none of them should be enough to floor you just straight off the bat. Um, but you should just be keeping an eye on your own health and uh, just kind of, you know, popping a self heal uh, when you feel like you need it. Other than this, really, just try to get into a nice, comfortable rotation, uh, just very similar as you would be if you were, you know, approaching trying to do uh, sort of a DPS test on a trial dummy. Um, just uh, fix your feet, and uh, unless you have that AoE underneath you, just pour as much damage as you possibly can into the thing, uh, and you're trying to bring it down. So you're trying to bring it down to around 35%. When you start to get to around 40% and just below 38, uh, just try and remind yourself that the fight is actually going to change at this point, uh, especially if you're a, uh, yeah, a melee fighter like myself, um, because at that point you'll no longer be able to do uh, DPS right underneath the boss. Uh, the boss will, uh, at 35%, um, on a rotation, do a radial attack that will literally wipe anybody that's below it. So um, what you'll need to do at that point is you'll need to uh, make sure that you're outside the range of that radial attack, uh, otherwise uh, as soon as it happens it will just wipe you. Essentially he'll put his swords together and then he'll just spin as you can see in front of you there. Uh, and if you're caught in that, um, you know, that area of effect, uh, as you can see uh, somebody went down in that one uh, just there. So just be prepared for it, uh, watch out for it, keep an eye on the percentages, and wait for that 35% basically. The fight doesn't really get any more difficult than that. As you can see, I'm just keeping a close eye on it and dodge rolling uh, back if I, uh, if I feel like I'm too close. 
I can actually hit the boss here with my uh, Power of Agony, uh, so that's really good to just keep uh, pouring damage onto him. Also, try to remember that this is the execute phase, so you uh, really have to keep continuing to pour damage onto him uh, as much as you can. This is because the tank is uh, at this phase uh, with that whirlwind attack, uh, really going to start to struggle to be able to absorb the amount of damage that Rocket Tour puts out. So you really need to try and be swift there with uh, taking the down. Cool, and down he goes. So in this particular fight, it's a case of uh, just tidying up those last uh, ads uh, that have been sitting in the background on the off tank. Uh, honestly, uh, the majority of the times I run this, uh, the ads are kept uh, so close to the boss that they uh, they just get wiped over time. So we've reached the part of the trial where the team effectively splits into two. Uh, on the left side, gathering where I've just gone through, uh, is the stand team, and then on the right side is the mag team, made up of you know the DDs from each uh, corresponding group. Uh, each team has a uh, a tank that goes with them and a healer that goes with them. If you're on the stam side, uh, you're going to want to go through and crouch in this position with the rest of the team. If you manage to do that successfully, uh, it doesn't always work, but um, if you do manage to, by the time that the team above you reach that point uh, and let you through, uh, effectively you can skip the entire first room of ads, which is quite nice and a bit of a time saver, uh, really. Uh, and so you're on to uh, the first of the gargoyles. Um, the Attack that they do, which is like a ground pound, uh, is uh, is no joke. It, yeah, it puts an AOE uh, around them. It's that one that you need to watch out for. Uh, if you're a uh, a DD, most likely you won't survive that if you're caught in the you know the radial. Other than this, uh, just like always, try to stay behind the um, behind the ad, thus avoiding the conal AOE. Uh, that he does which is pretty nasty. You can see there's also, uh, you know, burning uh, fire AoEs that drop in and around this space. They don't tend to do a huge amount of damage, but do try and avoid them if you can. They also put a damage over time effect on you, so keep a, an eye on your health bar as well and just pop a self heal uh, if you find yourself in difficulty. Um, honestly, it's not too difficult. Uh, just keep an eye out for that, um, that raid little AoE. So after that, make your way through to the next arena when you come in. The first wave of ads will always spawn in that location, so you can sort of drop your AoEs in there and pretty predictably uh, start um, damaging them. Um, this part of the trial is really just about surviving ad waves. Uh, there's a number of them. Honestly, there's nothing to worry about. Just continue to drop AoEs on the floor uh, and do as much damage as you can whilst trying to stay uh, grouped together relatively uh, you know, close to the rest of the DD so the healer can heal you. Every so often, uh, what I would call uh, sort of mini bosses uh, sort of enter into the arena and uh, the idea, the general idea is to focus uh, your direct damage on them whilst just dropping sort of AoEs around uh, their feet and cleaning up the rest of the ads. One of them will be a flame shaper, so keep an eye out for them uh, as uh, you've got to interrupt that attack. After you've cleared those ads, just entering the arena here is Rokudan. He's the boss on the stam side, uh, and what should happen here is that he'll be he'll come into the arena accompanied by uh, Wellwas, and the tank is going to effectively take the aggro of those uh, ads off of you whilst you do damage to the to the main boss. The main boss um, will randomly uh, focus on one of the DDs. Um, sometimes the uh, the tank also takes uh, aggro off of the DDs as well, um, but it's not really necessary. As you can see, uh, his attacks don't do all that much damage. Uh, and the healer is uh, just constantly on you uh, the entire time uh, because the tank can pretty much handle the damage uh, from the ads. Um, so you're just trying to stay on him uh, and uh, pour as much damage in, into him as possible. Uh, when he is stood still, just treat him as a target dummy pretty much. Uh, it's a very easy fight. There's not really anything to watch out for uh, from a you know from a DPS uh, point of view uh, other than just trying to uh, consistently do as much damage. You know, uh, if, if the boss is focusing on you, just keep a, you know, a, an eye on your health and um, yeah, just uh, continue to try and take down his health. Um, in terms of the 
the two arenas. Um, the stamina side definitely have it easier here. Uh, the bosses, uh, the mechanics of this boss, uh, if the tank knows what they're doing and knows to take the aggro off of you. The reason why you don't really need to focus your attention on these two guys uh, here, the, the Wellers, uh, in terms of DPS, is because specifically those ones that are glowing um, and become enraged, um, if you manage to take one of them down, the boss will literally just run straight over and, uh, and resurrect them. So uh, you can't really kill them until the end of the fight, so there's no point in trying, um, really. So interestingly, one thing that I kind of do with these uh, two stages is uh, you can get a really good readout on uh, the different groups' DPS. So if the stam side is you know finished up really nice and quickly uh, and then you're sort of lagging behind in the magicka side you can really you know get a sense that well potentially your ranged uh, damage is not going to be particularly awesome when it comes to the final boss and you know vice versa with stam as well if the stam team is taking a particularly long time uh, then you know there may be some concern about completing that final boss but uh, if um, everybody seems to be sort of like finishing roughly around the same kind of time and not taking particularly long, um, then it's uh, likely that you're, you know, you're doing pretty well. Uh, and as you can see with this particular team, we kind of finished roughly at the same time. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's always important that you finish roughly at the same time. So before moving on to the next part of the trial, I thought it important to show you what goes on on the uh, Magicka side. Uh, I haven't run this through as many times as the Stam side, but it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. So similar to the area downstairs, uh, it's a case of dealing with various uh, groups of ads and making your way across the top of the roof. As you make your way across there, uh, you'll notice uh, some ballistas. Uh, that are essentially placed along the roof area uh, and what you'll need to do is just essentially uh, burn them uh, as you go. Cool. So just getting rid of the final adds, uh, they actually bring you nicely to the final arena. So after you've finished off the final one, that will trigger the, uh, the boss to appear. And his name's Yukida Kai. Unlike the boss downstairs, his focus is more Magicka based. He's basically just an overpowered flame shaper that has uh, a few more mechanics to it. Um, so we'll uh, we'll talk about them uh, just very briefly. You can see there he just put his stuff up in the air, just like the flame shapers. And when he does that, you're going to want to interrupt him. After this happens, he'll then effectively split himself into four. However, only one of these four, the one with the health bar, is the one that's actually him. So doing any damage to the one, as I'm currently doing, uh, to sustain my well form, is not going to do actually any damage to the main boss. But what you do need to watch out for with these shades is uh, uh, effectively uh, interrupting their version of the flame attack, because they'll do the same amount of damage. And if that stacks up, if, they, if you manage uh, to get several of them doing it at the same time, uh, that can cause a wipe. So yeah, you really want to be uh, aware of that and be looking out for it. And that's why it helps within this fight actually to spread out around the arena and to not group together uh, too much and keep your eye on all of the various uh, different flame shapers as well as the main boss uh, and just kind of keep them all in your view because uh, you never know which, which one's really going to go off. So. Um, so the other thing to point out, the other mechanic, is that the uh, the boss you just saw there uh, will actually start to grow a large AoE around him also. As a DD, if you get caught in that AoE, it is likely to wipe you. Uh, so you're really going to be wanting to watch out for that. And specifically, it's uh, once again, it's Yukida Kai. It's the, uh, the the guy that has the, the health bar above him. So uh, none of the rest of the Flame Shapers will do that attack, uh, only himself. So. It's really not a particularly difficult fight. Uh, I guess the difference between this battle and the one uh, sort of downstairs, the one that the Stam group traditionally deals with, uh, is that unlike that battle where you're just literally just doing a whack of damage and you, and you can pretty much just stand there and just uh, lay into the guy, um, with this boss you have to pay attention to the mechanics a little bit more. So after both groups are finished, the gates will unlock and you'll be able to enter this area. Uh, I've marked on the map where some of the heavy sacks are. One of them you'll not be able to acquire until uh, after the next battle. Uh, there is this uh, NPC um, just uh, essentially in front of the two chests which uh, you'll need to defeat before anybody can unlock them. So uh, just uh, 
really just wait for the rest of the group and then when you're all there uh, just start uh, going ham on it. Other than the chests on this ledge is an interactable horn. Don't interact with it unless you're specifically told by the group or everybody agrees to because what that'll do is it'll trigger the ad wave and if you do that before the rest of the team is ready and the tanks are in position to be able to kite the ads uh, you can cause a team wipe so uh, this happens to quite a lot of the new players in Herar uh, and it's best just to wait for everybody to be, to be ready. Now in this situation somebody did actually blow the horn and you can see essentially uh, instead of the ads coming out in, in sort of a staggered formation everybody just comes out straight at once. Uh, in this situation the, the tanks are okay, they're very uh, experienced and so they've managed to get the gargoyles and drag them off uh, towards that door area over there which is traditionally what the uh, tactic is. Now as a uh, DD, uh, what your main focus is here is making sure those uh, flame shapers are interrupted uh, just like with the previous boss and also you're going to be looking at uh, essentially just dropping as much uh, sort of AoE damage as you possibly can and just generally staying uh, quite tight with the group so that healer can get heals on everybody together uh, and just burning everything down uh, as a group, basically as a group of uh, DDs. Um, it's quite easy to get overwhelmed here, uh, especially if you don't stack together uh, and, and deal with the, um, the ads that way. Uh, so really do try to stay nice and tight and move as a team, uh, just doing damage to everything as you go. So as the final ads go down, uh, don't forget to loot and loot those heavy sacks and make sure you've picked up all the, the loot from the chests as well before you leave the area. Uh, there is that one heavy sack that uh, is always going to be sitting too close to the enemy for you to get before the attack so everybody kind of grabs that before they go uh, through the door. So yeah, just remember to do so. Uh, and then you're just making your way through to the, uh, to the final arena. Now as soon as you uh, enter this section here, there is essentially like a run that everybody does and it's uh, a run to collect all of the various loot uh, before you actually start the boss. So by following this path around, uh, you'll be able to collect all of them uh, before starting. Uh, pay attention to not touch the interactable statues as you go past them. For if you do, these statues will trigger hard mode, which is something that you can't undo. So unless the team is really ready for that and up for that, then uh, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to be touching them. When you're ready to begin the final boss, uh, wait with everybody in this section and wait for the tank to pull. So this is the final boss of uh, veteran Helra uh, Citadel, uh, the warrior. And depending on what kind of group you're with, uh, this fight can really be either very very easy or, or really very difficult. And a lot of this is usually down to the amount of varying damage uh, that the DDs on the team are able to do. So, it, for instance, if you have a team uh, which does very high damage uh, generally, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to burn through the ads and you're going to burn the boss time relatively quickly. The quicker you actually burn the boss, uh, the less ads ultimately you have to deal with. So the quick, it's basically the quicker the fight. If you take far too long to burn down the boss, there is actually a mechanic which spawns uh, a great deal of ads all at once. And most of the time, that's a team wipe. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, so regarding the, uh, the general mechanics for the overall fight, as a DD, you should really be stacking on the side uh, that you started on. Uh, and that's the side that I pointed out beforehand in the diagram. This is because if you are on that side, uh, you actually get a damage increase uh, buff. Uh, if you were to stand on the other side, you get a health increase buff, which is why that side is the side that the tank stands on and traditionally tanks the, uh, as much as he can, tanks the uh, warrior uh, so that he's facing away from the rest of the group. Um, so what you're doing is you're just pouring as much damage into him as possible until ads appear and then you're kind of switching your focus onto those ads. 
Now there are a few other things to be aware of. Uh, the the boss himself, he likes to jump around and throw uh, directional uh, sort of uh, uh, area of effect attacks at you that can stun you and do a bit of damage uh, as well. Uh, at some point he'll jump in the air and he'll come down and do a, 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 an AoE on top of the uh, group as well that can wipe uh, DDs, certainly it can, uh, it can kill you in one hit. Um, also uh, we can see flame shapers here at this stage so they definitely need to be interrupted. A lot of the time uh, the off tank is uh, sort of trying to kite them to a point where they're close enough to the rest of the DDs that where they can just get essentially nuked within the uh, the general kind of AOE damage that's happening in the round. So as a DD I'm standing in the area where I'm doing the most damage uh, with that damage buff and I'm just watching out for uh, all of the various different uh, AOEs that are happening in and around on the floor. So the mechanic to it really is just uh, adds boss, adds boss, watch out for the AoEs. This section of the fight really only becomes uh, very difficult if you do leave the boss's health uh, too high for too long, you know, if you're not doing enough damage, pouring enough damage into him. Uh, you're trying to get the boss uh, in a relatively decent amount of time uh, down below 35% uh, because at that stage the adds no longer become an issue. They will literally disappear uh, as soon as uh, the boss hits that percentage. So uh, even if you're in a situation where you're swarming with adds and the boss is quite near, you know, he's on 39, say for instance, uh, just try and burn him as much as possible to get him to that point, because as soon as that happens, uh, this will happen uh, effectively, uh, and the, the fight will change uh, its dynamic, and all of the adds will disappear. So you get thrown back. Um, so. Effectively, you no longer have to stand in exactly the same place, and it's more beneficial in this part of the fight to uh, to spread out. The attack that you're looking for here now is when he puts his sword up in the air here. This is the biggest killer and the biggest wiper of teams. Uh, everybody must block during this attack, and also, if you can, try to block and move away from other players, uh, because you'll you see a little AoE uh, ring around you, and if you have two of them underneath you then that damage will uh, stack as well. Uh, but essentially blocking completely uh, uh, gets rid of the, um, the majority of the damage. Um, this is obviously dependent on whether you have enough stamina to be able to do that. So if you don't, uh, as you see it's going to bring the stamina down really quite low here. If I didn't have enough of the stamina pool that's going to that's gonna kill me. Uh, this wipes um, quite a lot of people. Uh, so after that sword uh, sort of attack happens have a look around the group and see if there's a lot of people down, you know, and if there is, uh, always focus on, you know, getting those uh, reses uh, before carrying on uh, sort of nuking the boss. This part of the fight is literally about focusing on mechanics and you don't, you really don't need to uh, worry too much about getting overwhelmed by damage. Just avoid AoEs and block that attack uh, as soon as it happens. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want to be careful of from a DD point of view is uh, he'll do a, an attack in front of you where he kind of swings his sword around uh, in the air. That one will, will literally wipe you, so uh, just be aware of that. Always try to stand behind him when possible uh, and uh, get, keep that block ready. By just paying attention to the mechanics and continuing to DPS him, that's the end result. So, this has been Veteran Hellrail Citadel, and I've been the White Lycan. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this uh, tutorial informative. I hope it helps you clear this trial a little easier and helps you uh, collect the item sets that you're looking for uh, throughout this trial. Uh, it did take me quite a few times to get the uh, get the sets that I was looking for, so it's really a good idea to try and find a uh, cool group of BAMPs to uh, continue to run this through with. If you have any loot uh, that you don't need, uh, remember to link that in chat and share that up. Uh, obviously, you know, just because you don't need it doesn't mean that somebody else isn't uh, really in need of that. So, yeah, this has been great. It's been really fun, uh, and uh, thank you for joining me. This time I'd like to say a special thank you to all of my subs. You guys and girls are giving me some really great encouragement, so I really appreciate that. And I promise to uh, yeah, keep punching out uh, awesome uh, interesting videos for you. Uh, thank you very much. Peace.